Hello there world of tankers, I'm Drudel's Blitz, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how to run your French auto-loading light tanks. So the AMX 1390, the 1357, your batch at, pretty much the entire AMX line starting at the AMX 12T, working your way down to the batch at, is exactly the same playstyle in my opinion. They have the same respective damage for the tiers they're in, and they're very, very similar. If you know how to run one of them, you're going to do very well in the rest of the tanks. But the issue is learning how to run them and getting that specific playstyle is very, very hard. So in today's video, Video, I'm going to be playing the AMX 1390 live for you guys, showing you how I do run the vehicle, some tips and tricks, how to run autoloaders in general, and hopefully by the end of this video, if you were struggling in the AMX 1390, a lot of people in the comments, you guys are actually the reason why I am making this video, a lot of people in the comments told me, Drudels, I'm really struggling with the 1390 or the bat chat line, it's a really tough tank, which I agree with. Not only do you not have the most ammunition, they also don't have the most pen, they have terrible armor, and they're also very easily bullied. If you you're in a 1390, and let's say you're up against a VK100, that guy's not going to care about you. He's just going to drive right into you and kill you. So you have to know what to do. You have to pay attention, and it's something that's very hard to do in a dinky little light tank where you have to get out, get out your damage in a clip. But the nice thing is that it has a clip. In fact, I do more damage than an Object 704 or an ISU 152 in the clip I do have. Now, looking at their lineup, that's kind of a literal hell for me, just judging that they have a T92, a T54, and a T49. Literally can't penetrate the... Uh, the 49. I'm going to struggle to pen the T92, but we have spotted one tank already, which is always good. Spotted the IS-3 Defender as well. Please don't be detected, please. Oh, we aren't, which is perfect. But here we go. Ooh, yeah, oh, I'm very surprised that that 92 is over to that side. Same for the T-54. Good thing we did our spotting run, right? So as you can see right off the bat, the T-54 is 100% targeting me. There's no no ifs, buts, whens, or uh, anything about it. That's just sort of how the AMX life is. People like to target bat chats. They're very easy to take out if you know what you're doing, and it's just something that people like to target. So I want to be very, very careful here. I want to wait for this T-54 maybe. We're going to get him the element of surprise here. So that was a very nice tap into the side. There's our second tap. And let's see if we can get one more in. There we go. Finishing off the T-54. We were able to distract him. Then our 49 and our uh, light tanks on the side were able to get some shots in. So that was some good teamwork. You'll w notice that one thing I'm going to stress insanely in your light tanks is that you want to get your clip out as quickly as possible. It's one thing that a lot of people don't do. But if you'll ever notice, the 57 Heavy, compared to my AMX 50B video, the main thing I compare, and by the way, I have no clue, yep, I knew he was going to be waiting for me, I figured, but hey, you know what, he didn't pen the HE because we had that cat-like reflex, and we were able to take off more hit points than he was taking off of us, because again, we have that nasty, nasty clip, able to do as much damage as just some of the tier 10 tank destroyers and blitz, so this guy, most likely going to be taken out here, I'm going to do a really, really stupid thing, but I do this all the time, it's called being way too aggressive, so here we go, we got that 92, doesn't look like he wants to play with us. In fact, I wouldn't want to play with him in the, uh, the same run here. But nice tap into that T92, which means that guy's a one-shot. And at the same time, they got a lot of deadly tanks there. I was kind of thinking, you know what, let's push him. But no, I take it back. We're three light tanks versus uh, not light tanks in general. And uh, those guns are still very deadly. In fact, if that ISU hits me, it can easily one-shot me. And if that T92 hits me, it can take me out of the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mobility. I'm not going to do what my, uh, my teammates are doing here. They're kind of just sitting still which is something, in my opinion, you don't want to do in a light tank, especially a clipper. You want to single out your opponents. They know where we were last spotted. So as you can see, it makes sense that they're going exactly where those guys were last spotted. So I'm not sure why you would just kind of sit there. So here we go. We've got the ISU spotted. We've got the IS-3 Defender. So let's get a shell into that side of the ISU. Let's get one more in, maybe. There we go. Two shots in, and we're not going to be able to get the third in, but still able to lower that ISU now to a one shot. Unfortunately, my RU uh, fell apart there, but you'll notice as soon as I can't get my shells into that ISU, as soon as I know that I can't get damage out, I'm going to immediately reload my clip. It's one little tip I will always say, because you want to reload your clip. You want to have the ability to, you know, have shells like this, where you can miss a shot and have two more left, where you can easily get the enemy in a revenge shot. So 49, just taking my, uh, or not my teammate out, but taking that T92 out, 
my second biggest threat, and all that's left of my biggest threat is this ISU. Now, hopefully that VK did not proxy spot me or spot me in general, but we are going to be trying to take out this ISU because, of course, that is my biggest threat. So there we go, ISU. Of course, because we have that wonderful camo rating, he can't outspot me. I used my little bit of brain power and realized, hey, he's probably going to be sitting there, and there you go. We were able to clutch this game. A pretty dang good game, too, if you ask me. So this is sort of how to run the AMX, but as I was trying to say at the beginning, you'll notice that I'm never going to just sit there and, uh, you know, let my shells go to waste. I'm always going to constantly try and get my shells out. You'll notice I didn't wait for that last shell. I'm going to reload my entire clip because there's no point in trying to pen him. He's already got a shell now. It's just a waste of time. So I'm going to wait for my clip to reload. The VK is looking like he wants to deal with that 49 more. So once that VK has fully committed to that guy, we can turn now and we can deal with the butt of this VK. So here we go. There's one shell in. There's two. And we're going to be able to get one more in, pushing off to the side here. Now that the 49 has the side of that VK, it looks like we should easily be getting out of victory here. Come on, 49. 49. Yes. So there you go. This 49 did a great job as well. I'm actually going to give him an effective player, which I rarely do, but good teammate overall. 3,200 damage. And one thing I will say is getting out damage in the AMXs is very, very tough. Not necessarily for the bat chat. That's a little bit of a different story. But for the AMX 1390 and for your AMX 1375, getting out any more than 3,000 damage is extremely prestigious in the tank. Don't feel bad if you're doing 1,600, 2,000. In fact, most of the games I've played in this tank, I'm only averaging about 2,000, if that. Because not only do you have to be very cautious, at the same time, you have to get all of your shells penned. This tank does not have the most pen. And you have to be able to get away from the opponent you shot. You have to be very smart on who you're pushing on. Let's say I pushed on a T-49. Now, sure, the 49, let's say he shot, I pushed on him, and I had no teammates around me. So the 49 had shot, I got, let's say, even eight cheese. Let's say I took 800 off him. Well, as soon as I took 800 off him, what's going to happen to poor old Droodles? Well, that 49 is going to rush me because I'm on a clip reload, and he's probably going to ruin my day. So one thing you always have to keep in mind is when you push on somebody with your clip, are they going to be able to retaliate? Or if you have the side of a tank destroyer, should you risk and take that last last shell to try and penetrate it or just back off and not bother to get that last shell which is something you'll always notice me doing like that vk last game i had the choice of trying to penetrate my last shell into that vk or i could have done what i did and just reload the clip and reloading the clip in my opinion was definitely the right move here we go let's see if we can get one more pen into this guy come on oh yeah the amx is not necessarily the most accurate tank but still able to get out 400 damage onto that t30 and that's the nice thing about a clip is while you may be this little dinky light tank you do deal a crazy crazy amount of damage something really not to be reckoned with so i have a feeling this 92 is going to be finishing off this guy yep so let's reload i hope we weren't spotted from shooting there no we were not thankfully this tank has actually one of the strongest camo ratings for uh, pretty much all tanks in the game just because it's so small in profile. So we have the FE301 right here and that is a very deadly tank. We also have the WT right there. So I'm gonna be going right past this FE because of course I don't wanna play with the AMX. So let's go past the FE, let's tap the AMX in the side and uh, just gonna skirt my way through here. And there we go, right in the safety. You'll notice I'm always very passive aggressive in the vehicle. I don't wanna play, and I think that's the same VK from last game, but I don't wanna play with an AMX 5120. It will literally ruin my day. At the same time, I don't wanna play with an FE 301. It will ruin my day as soon as it's able to get out damage. But as soon as I see this VK, hey, he fired, I can easily get out damage here. So there's one shell and we can get easily two more out. There's one more, and um, yeah, this guy's going to be taken out with the last shell. Well, it doesn't even matter. So again, reload the clip. You'll notice here, this is sort of the same thing over and over and over with your auto-loading lights. So let's see if we can squeeze our way through here. We've got the AMX right to our side, and I would love to be able to hit this guy. So this AMX does not seem like the most of skilled players, so let's see if we can hit him here. Able to hit him back up just safely, and because we do have a quicker uh, clip reload, I know that I can sort of take the risk, tap him three times. Again, that is 600 damage right there. So it's not like you're not doing a lot of damage in the tank. It's just that you really don't get out the most damage in general because, as you can see here, I have to be very calm and cautious. Getting damage out is not necessarily the easiest thing. I know that this AMX is pretty much on a full reload, and uh, yeah, his reload is quite long. So uh, let's just give him a little ram here, and yep, there you go. Let my teammate shoot him. So I'll take 2,364 damage. Very, very respectable amount, again, especially for a tier 9 battle. So you'll always notice I'm constantly reloading my clip, and I'll go into the garage and I'll talk about it just for a little bit of a second. Or actually, you know what, I don't really care how much we do in the next game. We'll just do one more and I'll talk about really what I'm trying to get out here. 
But the first thing is the main reason the 50B is compared to the 57, and the 57 always wins in my opinion, is because it has that 0.5 second shell interval quicker. Now that doesn't sound like much of a difference, but that's one whole second. That's the difference from somebody repairing their track and somebody not when you're trying to perma track them. It's 2.5 seconds the same as the 1390. Now what that means is that if you're a player that spends, let's say you have your 2.5 second shell interval, which means after I shoot off my first shell, it takes 2.5 seconds for my next shell to get loaded in and ready to fire. If you're a player that takes 5 seconds, so let's say it takes you 2.5 and then another 2.5 of aiming to make sure your shot pens after you've got your shell ready, you're wasting time and you shouldn't be doing that in my opinion. When you're running these tanks, you don't have time to waste. First of all, you don't have a lot of DPM, you don't have a lot of armor, so every tank on the enemy team is pretty much a big threat. You have no hit points, you have no armor, and one singular shell from a heavy tank really really hurts so like this yeah that's that's a lot of pain right there i don't want to play with an is6 legend legend and sadly my teammate is actually kind of killing me here by not letting me move yep there you go my teammate lost me 423 hit points and 288 there so i lost half my health from that teammate thank you very much but we're going to be driving away i'm not going to complain about it because there's no point to complain about something that's already over so we've got the IS-3, and we've got this uh, Luva, who looks like he's pushing right out here. And there we go, nice tap into the side. And should I reload the clip? I'm thinking about it. But at the same time, I'm not sure if this Luva or the IS-6, which side they're on. But as soon as I saw the IS-6 was on the other side, I'm going to reload the clip again. I know that I'm not going to be able to get damage, so might as well reload the clip. But this is one of the worst possible maps for an Amex 1390, because of course it's very small, close quarters. you got to really know what you're doing, and that's an issue with this tank. So we've got the Type 61 out in the open, so there's one tap into the 61. Let's see if we can get any more. Oof, that was not a very accurate shell, but uh, let's just fire on the move. Did hit the guy, bounced off him, but again, I'm not going to worry about it. You'll notice I'm not trying to aim in my shells because, of course, my uh, you know safety and health is something that's also very important in this tank. That Type 61 we're easily going to outspot because, as I said, I have a wonderful, wonderful camo rating. So uh, the Type 61 we're easily spotting there, and... Um, I'm not too worried about him killing me, to be honest. Like, yeah, he could get me, but right now, I think I actually have bigger fish in the sea to deal with. Especially, that Type 61 doesn't even think of me as a big threat. But here we go, we got that IS-6 once, we've gotten our opponents quite whittled down, and I'm doing a good job of distracting as well. One thing a lot of people don't do is use your tank as bait. Now, this Type 61 might be able to take us out here, but 7 seconds, 6 seconds, oh, he blew it, so that's it, he's done. All right, so here we go. Now this Type 61 is in the danger zone, but uh, at the same time, I want to be a little bit careful here. So let's finish off the Type 61, get a little snap in there, and get our other shell into the T-54 lightweight. So you can see this game, not necessarily the most damaging. In fact, not a lot of damage at all. How much did we get out? Probably not even over 2,000, but it was 1,595 damage. So as you can see, you don't need to get out damage to do well in an AMX. It's just the fact that you have to know what you're doing and when you're doing. If you're able to support your team there, as you saw, even when I did lose quite a bit of HP at the beginning, I was still able to support my team, able to get out that clip, and you'll notice I never wasted time, never hesitated on reloading my clip. It's just a quick decision that goes through my mind. If you don't, let's say, this is how the mind algorithm goes, if you don't see anybody that you could shoot within the next 10 seconds, or even 5 seconds, reload your clip, there's no point in wasting DPM. If you've one shell left, just reload the clip. Second of all, when you're using the tank, as I said, don't bother waiting to aim in your shells. Don't spend 5 seconds, half of your shell interval. Again, what I mean by that is it takes 2.5 seconds for your shells to load into your gun after the first shell. So after I fired my first shell, it's taking 2.5 seconds. If you're spending any time longer than that 2.5 seconds to aim in on the enemy, you shouldn't. You should just fire your shells, get them out, try to penetrate them, and get away. Because if you're flanking the enemy and you're spending your time to make sure that these shells pen and everything goes well, you're going to have some serious problems. Now, of course, you could try and track them, which then you can take your time. But once you have tracked them, again, just get out of there. Don't bother trying to wait and pop out again. Unless you really know what you're doing, it's really dangerous to just take your time on trying to penetrate your shells because the enemy can tap you back and it's going to hit you twice as hard sometimes. If you're trying to mess with a tank destroyer, yeah, not always the best idea in my opinion. So let me know if you learned anything in the comments down below. Of course, if you did, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It really does help out the channel. But other than that, I hope you're all doing well out there. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.